Hey, Apple. Did I do? All right, all right, all right. Welcome, everybody. Another episode of Legend Sports and Amplify. And we are here talking just about every day baseball history, Negro League baseball history, uh, Latin baseball history, all those passions and pursuits that go along with it from research, books, collecting, art. And today I'm really, really f happy to have on. Uh, he's another, he's a fellow Texan, so this would be a lot of fun. Uh, Sergio Santos, multimedia artist, El Santos World. How are you, man? Greetings. I'm doing good. All right. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for taking the time. And I apologize. I, I jacked up the days here, everybody. Uh, I, I'm in the middle of a bunch of different things and moving is one of them and people visiting and my, my son in from the Navy and all kinds of stuff. And I, I got my dates all jacked up and Sergio has been happy. He's been uh, you know, nice enough to go ahead and do it today. I, I had the wrong date. And here we are. So <laughs> thank you. I appreciate your time. <laughs> So I just uh, didn't want to miss our conversation. So <laughs> no, you know I am good. I I try to make this easy. Uh, try to get this fit in here, and and I do. Um, I really enjoy these conversations. I was telling you before we got started here, what why I started doing this to to support you know a lot of the things that were going on at first with you know Negro Leagues and Black Baseball history, but as I started doing more of these. I started meeting more people. And you know how it is, right? You know, you, you, you talk to somebody, they know somebody else. Hey, maybe they might want to come on. And the uh, art side of things with the card artists and the collecting of that has been a lot of fun. And I can't believe I missed you in that Josh Gibson card art campaign. We'll, we'll talk about that. I'd like to hear more about that experience with that card and how you went through that. But, uh, you know, your what you put out on Twitter, I think, is great. I, I love those little videos that give a little bit of insights and show the process and everything else. And I just think these conversations that people can hear somebody and tell it in their own words and, and, and get what goes into it. I think it's really, really a lot of fun. And, and it's very, very cool for people to see that. So tell us about you what what's about el santos world your your origin story that was that was something that one of the one of the researchers told he called that about some of these players early players that you don't know much about and stories are coming out it was like spider-man like the origin story of a superhero you know so what what's uh, so tell us about who how you how you got into what you're doing and uh a little bit about your career well um, from an early age, uh, I just always made things. I always, I was laughing the other day because my life hasn't changed from that. I always had music going and I was always working on something. And it was, <laughs> you know, when I was little, it was, um, you know, it started with crayons and then built from there. Mm -hmm. Um, in college, I got into photography. Okay. And um, I had a big mouth and talked my way into getting work. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and it, you know, immediately was exhibiting, doing art shows. Um, and it, somewhere in that time, I collaborated with a painter on some imagery where I did the, pretty much the compositions. She would come in with the color and, um, and I love the way she worked. Mm -hmm. So that started the itch. And all of a sudden, um, I wasn't doing photography anymore. <laughs> cool. And how'd and, you get and how'd you get into the sports side of things? Because you've got a lot of you your know, work does involve music and other things, but a lot, of, a lot of sports, a lot of baseball. Yeah. Uh, well, when um, the big, that big day in March, of uh <laughs> of covid when covid first started mm -hmm. um i traditionally was an artist who would be present at live art shows mm -hmm. um i'd go to festivals all the in-person stuff 
that um, by this one announcement had just been halted. <laughs> right. Things start canceling back yeah. to back. You know, I'm concerned. I have little ones. I have one that um, she has asthma, mm. and um, so it was. Uh, it was kind of a horrific, depressing moment. <laughs> I bet. And um, I had not. I think at that time I was starting to make a few baseball pieces, but. Um, just taking those emotions, I started to make these sad, nondescript baseball players. And it was just mirroring what I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, and those got attention. And then I started to make enough of them that um, there's different ways that I market. And, um, you know, one of them is Instagram. And so I have my main uh, El Santos World handle. Mm -hmm. But I started an El Santos baseball account. Okay. And then that's where I got the most dialogue from from other artists. And um, then uh, I was already doing work about the Negro Leagues and the NLBMA um, art community mm -hmm. was putting together a fundraiser of 100. Uh, 100 artists to celebrate 100 years of the Negro Leagues. And I got an invite to that. Mm -hmm. And um, and I was uh, I was so excited. And, um, I bet. The, the guy who organized it, Tad Richardson. Mm -hmm. um, Good guy. Would, uh, he'd have Zoom meetings. And, uh, and it was just cool. It was, it was something probably many of us needed. Sure. I, I tell him when I talk to him, um, you don't understand that, um, at least for me, I can't speak for anyone else, but you kind of um, helped us so much economically <laughs> because we were able to fundraise for this good cause, but at the same time, we, mm -hmm. we got a following because there were all these eyes mm -hmm. on us. And, um, and to this day, um, I'm just so thankful for that. And like I said, I had already been making pieces about um, that history just because I was interested in it. And that's a lot of my pop culture artwork. Mm -hmm. That's where it comes from. Um, I watch a lot of documentaries. I don't read as much these days because I have um, a six-year-old. or Yeah, he's about to be seven. Um, six-year-old and twin five-year-old. Oh, and I'm wow. a single father. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, Reading, I don't do as much, but I, you know, I listen to podcasts, I watch documentaries in the studio, mm -hmm. and um, that's um, a lot. A lot of where that sports art came from, and then it was just, you know, I like I like all variety of things, so it's whatever I'm in the mood for. I love but your the sports. I... I love yeah, your ahead. you on your website. I create with whatever gets in my way. I thought that's an awesome. <laughs> that's an awesome line. Yeah, that is very fun. Very fun. Well, that it, well, it's very true. Um, I don't. Um, I often feel like I'm moving through something to get that final image. You know, especially uh, just the process I've adopted over time. It's. Um, I don't use uh, paint palettes. I'll use other canvas because I don't like to waste paint. I feel like you use a palette and it dries up and throw that paint away. Mm -hmm. It makes me cry. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, my dad was the same way. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. So, so you know, to me, it it builds up and it's like archaeology, mm -hmm. and then I'm building on top of that. And, mm -hmm. Um, it, you know, it gives it its own breath. It's yeah, cool. It is cool. I, I understand exactly what you're saying. My dad, I, I was telling you a little bit, he, he did um, <clears throat> out, a lot of outdoor scenes, you know, lakes, trees, uh, deer, uh, outdoor scenes. And he did some, did some portraits, but he, he, uh, he did the same thing. He had these, you know, the old style that were kind of shaped like a, I don't know, like a, uh, like a lily pad with the hole at the bottom and you put your thumb through and you held it and that's how you mixed your paints right and he he did the same thing he 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 would paint and then he never cleaned it off never kept it and after over time it became like a work of art on its own that and, yeah. and as a matter of fact my, my 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 sister kept two or three of them 
that years later, he passed away, uh, 2008, and um, she kept them, and she that's what she did with them. She 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 put his name on them, and and she has them, you know, one in her house, one one she actually even put outside. It was a bigger one that. Um, before he passed away, he had put her street number three one five, and that's what was her her house. You know, instead of just the block letters, you know, it was this cool thing. So yeah, it, it's really fun, and th- those things are telling stories too. Every every single thing, every single thing that you do is a as a work of art is telling a story, and and you're telling it in your own way. That's what I think is so much fun about the card art. I mean, I never knew I. I'm not a collector uh, per se. I mean, I have some things over the years that I, for baseball that I have gotten, but I never, I can't say I'm a collector. There's people who are, yes, this is what they do and they want to get the whole 1951, you know, whatever set. I'm not like that, but I do like to do it now and then and I understand it. But I had no idea that there was a whole world of one of one card art out there. And it's cool that you were able to get involved in that uh because yeah there is a market for that people are looking for those things yeah well it's it's nostalgia Mm -hmm. and i think the other part of like like i said i i turned to this baseball art you know there wasn't a there wasn't a season that year and that was sad Mm -hmm. and um but what it felt like is like when i was in um middle school and I would trade cards the enthusiasm of coming to to school and yeah. the other kids that were geeking out on that. But then I remember I got to high school and that kind of disappeared. Like nobody nobody else was into this stuff. And um but to me it was like a reunion. Like I found those kids again. Yeah that's a great <laughs> and, boy oh boy. And, it turns out there's a ton of them. <laughs> yes, there are. Uh, it, it, you do go through those stages. It, it is so funny that you said that because Phil Dixon, who Phil S. Dixon is a longtime Negro Leagues historian, author of many, many books. He's got a new one coming out pretty soon. I'm hoping to get him on again in the near future to talk about his newest book. But he was involved in the um, founding of the Negro League baseball museum in Kansas City, a uh, longtime researcher, author, good guy. And um, he, t- he started out collecting baseball cards and other cards. He talked about these Beatles cards that he was collecting in the 1960s. That was a set of Beatles uh, cards. But he said exactly what you said. He got so many cards as he got into his teenage years because other guys found girls and didn't care. So he would ask them, Hey, if you don't want those cards anymore, how about, can I have them? So he said he had, he got many hundreds of cards over the years or got them, you know, cheaper than maybe they might've been worth. Of course, back then, maybe they, the, the collecting wasn't quite what it is now, but you know, yeah, because their focus from collecting those cards was gone. Now I bet you a lot of those guys were wishing that they had those cards back you know, today, right? When you think about it. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Um, I went to a Comic Con with my brother. A oh few wow! Years ago. I, I would love to go to one of these one day. Yeah. Yeah, but it it was cool because I saw you know all these kids there that were older, and um, it made me happy because when I was younger, you know, like you said, people got into girls, so you're not going to collect cards. Uh-huh. That idea of like I'm going to lose the stuff that makes me happy. You yep. know, to be to be some other weird thing. <laughs> That's that will right. also pass. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time that, they do, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Yeah. In, in this younger culture, I don't see that as much. And I actually get um like I said, I, I uh there's different ways I market and um TikTok is one of them. Okay. And so I get a lot of younger cool. kids there and cool. I just feel I, I appreciate their enthusiasm and um, there's a sweetness that I feel like maybe wasn't as present when I was their age. Huh. Um, Interesting. So it's cool. Um, yeah. I, and I, I'm all for that culture. So <laughs> mm-hmm. Very cool. Uh, you know, I'm still, uh, I, I, I put out, I, I started doing it because of the lockdown, the lockout with baseball, but you know, that they're not, 
uh, labor dispute, the current one. But I started doing, um, it's a simulation game. But I've been playing these those types of games since I was probably about eight years old in some fashion. You know, back when I was a kid, they were dice and a card and you wrote everything down. Now it's all computer. You can still buy the cards. But, but yeah, I still have that connection to... Uh, when I was a kid, I, I'm never going to give that up. I mean, I think it's just, I think it's, it's great. Um, I don't know. I, it sounds cliche to say it keeps you young, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying because it, it kind of, kind of does. I mean, and baseball kind of has that way to, to, of doing that. You know, you're always, you're always, um, kind of looking back baseball, you know, it's funny. Some things you look forward to baseball, you, you look a little forward, but Baseball, there's a lot of looking back, and a lot of times when you're looking back at baseball, you're viewing it differently at different times of your life. It, it's interesting. I, I find it kind of uh, kind of a unique in its way that way. I mean, I was I was thinking about um, I like to do music art. Oh, yeah, and I saw that. So I have my music crowd, but the sports crowd is so much stronger. And I started to think about why is that? Why is why is the sports crowd stronger? Mm -hmm. Why do they? Um, and the thing is, sports is such a communal experience. Yeah, Music is like yeah. that too, but there's so much variety and taste and weird musical <laughs> politics sometimes within especially youth culture <laughs> interesting <yeah. laughs> where you have to you have to listen to music a certain way and sports is pretty straightforward this is your team you root for them or you don't root and you for stay them. loyal you stay loyal <laughs> you know that's a, that's an interesting point that's a that's an interesting point yeah. because i've moved a couple of times i lived in, I, lived, I grew up in pennsylvania lived there till i was 29 then i lived then i moved to virginia and then i moved here in the late 90s to texas and and uh so I've been here a long time now, but but I still will always remain a Philly sports guy. Uh, I will yeah. I will not you know bandwagon onto somebody else. I have not grown. I will always be you know doesn't matter Phillies, Seventy Sixers, Eagles, Flyers. I will always be the sports those Philly sports fans. And maybe that's it, right? Because music you do tend to kind of evolve over time. Maybe you start out liking heavy metal and you move into something else and you move into something else. You might still like some of the things. I, you know, I guess I like, I grew up listening to the police. Uh, who else? U2, when I was a kid, was popular. You know, those kinds of bands. And I still listen to them, but, you know, your tastes do evolve over time. Plus you have kids, you start listening to Enya, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> so, yeah, your tastes do change. But, but yeah, sports, <laughs> you're right. Sports, you tend to keep it with you, in you, for a long, long time. And it, ca it follows you no matter where you go, you know. So, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the... Um, the Josh Gibson card art, because I can't believe I, I missed you in there. You said you got into that card art campaign a little later because I, I was for the first maybe six, seven weeks of it. I was having two or three artists on talking about their work, talking about how they got into yeah. it. So I, I've been kind of curious, you know, because all of them kind of had the same story that many of them didn't really know a heck of a lot about the Negro Leagues. Uh, may have kind of had a little bit of high level knowledge about it or or Josh Gibson in general, but through that they learned a heck of a lot and so i'm I'm curious when you got into that what did you what you knew and and how that process kind of fell out yeah i mean i um I was not an expert, but I was always conscious of it, and the idea that such a thing existed is weird amazing right um <laughs> <laughs> it is. It, it's, it's, it is. It's hard it, to believe. Yeah. It's culturally, to believe. I, I think about this documentary I saw where um, they were talking about um, the the diner where mm -hmm. the the eight guys like sat and wouldn't leave, mm -hmm. and um, so the the guy uh, is this young kid giving a tour at a uh, in DC somewhere I think mm -hmm. about this incident, and there's a group of kids that are on the tour. And this little girl raises her hand. She said, is this real? Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem possible, right? <laughs> and even as a kid, um, that's how I felt about um, that history. Mm -hmm. So I was always um, drawn. And as a kid, I loved looking at, at photographs, especially vintage photographs. Mm -hmm. And 
Negro League Baseball, because it's not documented the way major leagues were, mm-hmm. there's an enigma that's even more mm-hmm. profound mm-hmm. to those images. And so I've always um, just admiring photography, starting in photography. Um, a lot of my influences were sports art, but I loved, I just love those pictures. Um, mm-hmm. And so I started doing baseball art and just organically went to that time. And that, that's how I got on their radar. Um, I was already digging them and they, they lent themselves to my style. Like I said, a lot of what I do, I like it to feel like archaeology. And this was real archaeology. Yeah. Now, as I, as I would uh, pick a player and uh, play with his likeness, um, I, uh, I learned a lot more in that process. Mm-hmm. But um, it's something I always loved. I, I was not as conscious, I think, of uh, like the Mexican leagues and the Cuban leagues. Big connection but, there. Uh, Big connection there, yeah. you know, and, and that's like, like I was telling you, you know, as I started doing these, uh, you, you find out more. And it turns out I knew, I, I thought I knew baseball history as a kid growing up. You know, I played, I coached, I, I did all that. And it turns out I didn't know half the story. And then that whole pipeline between Latin America from um, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, Venezuela, Mexico. I mean, think about it. I mean, I, I had on uh, Jorge Colon Delgado the other day. He's the historian of the Puerto Rican Baseball League. And we talked more about that connection with Puerto Rico and the Negro Leagues. But, you know, we talked also about how, why they went there and why many of these guys, you know, a lot of them didn't come back. Uh, my, my, one of my favorite stories is um, uh, Bernice Wright, Wild Bill Wright, uh, who went to Mexico several seasons and played in the Mexican Leagues and never came back. Stayed, uh, started a bar and a restaurant. I, I would love to know what happened to it. Where is it? Agua Calientes uh, is the city where he stayed. And that bar was still in existence into the 80s, as far as I know. I would love to go there and find out more. But, you you know, there's no surprise why those guys went. They didn't have to deal with the racism and the Jim Crow and, <laughs> yeah. and the discrimination here. They could live like normal people. Um, so, yeah, yeah, there's a big connection between Latin America and the Negro Leagues. And for, for a long time, I don't think people realized that was how most of those guys were getting into the United States Leagues, even beyond Jackie Robinson, because they had already been coming here for a number of years and that pipeline was already there. So, yeah, it, it's an interesting uh, history that I, I wish I wish everybody knew. Uh, and, you know, maybe I'm a geek. I mean, I don't know. You know, I just find it well, just I mean, incredible. Yeah. And that that's, I guess that's how I approach when I do, because um, there's, there's my pop culture work. And then there's just the weird stuff I do mm-hmm. on my own. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but the, the pop culture really is about just celebrating the things I'm interested in. And with the Negro League stuff, I'm like, I am interested and in, I'm, I'm happy to bring awareness to it. Um, I think it's important because it was unjustly buried. Mm-hmm. Um, it really was. When, and we really um, kind of buried large parts of a gem there. Um, but yeah. in that, there's beauty, you know? Because um, the, and, uh, the pieces about, that I've made, I, I'm so proud of. Um, I bet. I yeah. bet. And and think about what's going on, you know, in some, some places a little bit more vigorously than others. I mean, the, the effort to try to keep on, you know, those some of these stories oh no can't talk about that that's not uh it's gonna make people feel bad what <laughs> there were <laughs> gen- there were generations of these guys and their families and their that, that had to deal with way more than having to just feel bad about something i mean they they literally um you know i i can't i i, I tell this sometimes when people complain about something and and I, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a mood in a certain day at my office or at work, you know, uh, people will say something and I'm like, well, you know, at least you don't have to drive home and make sure you get home before sundown. And they'll be like, what? You know, because yeah, you know, 50 years ago, 70 years ago, hundred years ago, there were towns, right? Where these guys, if they didn't get out of town by the time the sun went down, 
they might have a problem. We don't have to deal with that today. So I'm not sure anybody has a problem at their work that's quite along those lines. But um, anyway, I, I just find it, um, you know, it, it's a part of history that I, I don't think we should not be talking about. I think people should should know the way it was. And, and you're right. How did that ever get there? Boy, oh boy, I, I can't can't even imagine. Um, but it did, and now we and just not, have to deal with it. To... And not to repeat such a story. Absolutely, is, yes. It's the uh, the largest lesson there. Yeah, well, you know, that's what they always say about history. Those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it, right? And that's kind of kind of true, right? So um, before we go out, I wanted to take people out to your uh, website so they can actually see um, – your work and 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 we'll talk about some things but two two things i wanted to just talk about before we do that um today is hall of fame day i guess if you can call it that i'm not sure how much you follow um you know baseball or current baseball but even during the lockout baseball's going on you know i told you andy brown's down in the dominican documenting all that there's the mexican league there's winter leagues going on but but the hall of fame vote is today which any you got any thoughts on uh on, on that, since it is Hall of Fame Day today, they're going to, at 6 o'clock, I think it's on MLB Network and a few other places, they're going to um, reveal who makes the Hall of Fame in this year's vote. You got any thoughts on the Hall of Fame? Not, I, I'm always interested to see who makes it in. Um, it's funny because most of my uh, news like that comes from Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> It's a great place for news. I, yeah. I I have so much in the studio, but yeah, the, I um, I'm thankful to my. Uh, oops. Hang on. Okay, there you are. Am I back? Yep. Yeah, I had a I had a, a telemarketer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I am. Uh, I don't know. Do you have any picks? Well, you know, uh, I was following way more closely the. Uh, the era committees that they, they did last month because that was bringing in the players who did not get in. And the early ballot included a, a number of Negro leaguers, Buck O'Neill got in, um, Mini Minoso, um, and, and several other early, early players. Um, I, I gotta say, it's interesting. I mean, the, probably about the last 15 to 20 years, I, I don't follow baseball like I used to. I, I, I'm more immersed in, what happened with the, these stories that we're talking about with the Negro Leagues and Latin America, but but also the way the game has kind of changed. I, I, I'm not really as enthused about it as I used to be. I mean, great players, don't get me wrong, but the game to me is not as not as fun, not as exciting to go to. But but this whole thing with this ballot should be interesting to see because you got a lot of politics and a lot of other things wrapped up in this ballot right because you got the kirk Schilling hasn't been elected um because of a lot of the crazy things that he's said and done over the last couple of years um you know you got some of the guys who are the steroid era guys so to speak right you know quote unquote did they did they not i mean how did that you know how did that affect things and many of those guys are kind of like barry bonds and and others but then conversely David Ortiz was kind of wrapped up in that, but he looks like he may be the only, you know, one guy who gets in this year. So be interesting to see. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's interesting. Um, what you were saying about Schilling, mm -hmm. the, just how uh, he should always behave. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I, think it, I mean, it, it, it affects yeah. everything in your life. You know, um, I get asked for, career advice quite a bit and I, and I say be nice you yeah, know be, be nice, nice yeah. to everyone because mm -hmm. not just one because you should be two you never know how you can work with that person you never and, um, know. Yeah. and you never know who's watching <laughs> exactly and you know in the, in the world of social media uh, especially, yeah. right? I mean, I, I've been telling my, I've been telling my kids like for years. I mean, especially now that they're both one's twenty now and the other one is 
18, you know, they're, they're, you got to be be careful what you put out there. You never know. You don't want five years from now some crazy picture coming back that uh, for whatever reason you did whatever you did at the time. And, and yeah, you got you to gotta be careful. Now, you know, is some of the stuff that maybe he says, yeah, I guess it's free speech. You could say what you want. Everybody has the free speech ability to say something that makes them look yeah. great or look like a fool either way, right? That's your, <laughs> that's your right as an American citizen, right? <laughs> you have that freedom of speech, but you're also accountable for the speech you are. you use. And you know, so. <laughs> you know what? that's interesting, right? Because that's something that um, when it comes to these guys, especially – the, the the stage that they are at the, the as far as they're they're on that pedestal they're in 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 major league baseball they're looked at as a as a you know role model a lot of these kids kids look up to a lot of these guys and and so yeah they 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 have a responsibility i think to behave uh, accordingly because that's who's looking at them you know it's going to be adults you know who are going to be saying whatever but really it, the things that they're saying and doing are are really having i think a bigger influence on kids because that's who really looks up to them i think it's important so you see you see the guys who handle themselves the right way um you know you have a lot of respect for those types of players who uh are um are doing it the right way and and not most of them are don't don't get me wrong but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. but there are there are some things i guess you can get into that you ought to maybe just Back up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> pause, take a breath. Um, no one's suppressing you. Um, oftentimes you suppress yourself, I think. I mean, when it comes to these, I, I love when I hear people on, uh, or I read people are, you know, in, in the news or in, on social media, oh, I'm being oppressed, I'm being suppressed. No, you're not. You said whatever you wanted to do. And, and now society is suppressing you. There's no law that says that you can't uh, say whatever you want, but um, yeah, you might have a little bit of backlash if you do, you know? So, <laughs> and so the other thing I wanted to talk to you about too, though, is NFTs. Cause I don't know anything at all about them. And I know, I know on your website, you, uh, you do list the um, fact that you do NFT. So give us the, the 10 cent tour of, well, NFTs, what they are, how they work. So do you love the response when people say, well, it's a non-fungible token? <laughs> right, like that, <laughs> like that explains everything, right? <laughs> the, I think what makes them so confusing, am I right? You're, are you confused by them? Yeah, I often am because yeah. I, I hear all kinds they're, of things that... Uh, are conflicting are a lot of times, yeah. Yeah, they're confusing, um, they're frustrating, and I think the reason for that is that they have so many different uses. Um, a lot of the, I think the standard response is like, why am I going to pay for a JPEG? And um, the thing is, it's not about a JPEG. It's um, like I started to mint a little project called Little Monster Mayans. Mm -hmm. And I'll admit that um, I'm still learning the capability of the NFT. But the more I, um, I study, uh, first, I think the most important thing is to understand cryptocurrency first. Mm -hmm. What a blockchain is, what all of these things are. Mm -hmm. Once you have that structure, the other stuff will start to make sense, more sense. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, go ahead. The, 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 confusing, you... the confusing thing to me all the time, right, is uh, I'll read one article that will say, this is the greatest thing since money. And then I'll read, <laughs> then I'll read another one that will say, this is like the biggest Ponzi scheme since Ponzi. And it's like, okay, what somewhere in the middle is the truth on these. I'm sure, uh, you know, from, from a totally inexperienced standpoint, um, I like to hold things. I even, I even have a hard time sometimes uh, reading a book on my phone or on a, on a tablet because I like holding a book. I, I just think it's, it's, maybe I'm old school. I don't know, you know, but well, that, um, that's, that's interesting. That idea of like the tangible, mm -hmm. because what's happening is 
I think younger culture is moving away from that. Right. Yes. And they so, don't necessarily want a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. um, and it gets even weirder when you start to look at metaverse uh, things in the yeah. digital space. Our kids, my kids are really into games. I mean, they're five and mm -hmm. six. Yeah, my little guys. But way. they're they're already very adept. Mm -hmm. That's only going to increase mm -hmm. in this digital world that doesn't make sense to a lot of people. Um, you know, it's coming whether they're ready for it or not. Yeah. And that is a lot. A lot of what we're watching is um, what we watched with the Internet. You know, that was a scam. That would never catch on. <laughs> right? That's what they People, said in the beginning. Yeah. You know, there were, I was watching a documentary about that. And, um, you know, there were early companies that pretty much were DoorDash in the 90s. Mm -hmm. But that was a dumb idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? So that is the era we're at with NFTs. As far as an artist use for it. Yes. Um, as artists, we have never in our history had the consideration that this setup gives that I can sell an NFT and if it is resold, I can take 10% of that in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. I love that. I'm a yes. single father of three kids. When I'm gone, I would love to leave them awesome. my life's work and have it keep paying them. Now, the way you give value to that, you know, it's not just by putting out this really cool JPEG, you know, you're not going to be wowed by my Josh Gibson card and just want to give me money for that. Mm -hmm. It's to me, it's an agreement between myself as artist and the people that have already supported me. I mean, mm -hmm. you've, they've already bought physical pieces from me mm -hmm. without, you know, those may be worth something someday and that's kind of a gamble that they're taking investing mm -hmm. in me because i'm you know i'm just a dude making art mm -hmm. <laughs> but um it's the same thing with the nfts you're you're buying this from me and i'm making a promise that i'll keep making art until i'm out of here and the thing is um i and under, understanding it more the more i play with the space i bought an nft you know, I kept watching videos. I kept reading. Yeah. I didn't understand what was going on. So I bought like two projects. One of them was a dud. The, the people just kind of went away. And I'm like, okay. And I was, that's the thing. Be willing to take a risk mm -hmm. if you're going to play with this stuff. Now, the other one, I've loved what they've done because they're, you know, it's a small project, but it was a, a luchador theme thing. Oh, yeah. And okay. so they... So they released a comic book. And so you go to your web, their website with your NFT and you have access to that comic book. Um, now that comic book could be, uh, you know, somebody could download it and redistribute it. It could be bootleg, mm -hmm. but it's kind of cool that that's, um, that shows me that that team is actually thinking about, you know, me who gave them money mm -hmm. for this JPEG, which represented something. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I want to do with my NFTs. Now I'm still, I don't have a developer to make me a website like that yet, but when I do, you better believe that the people that buy my NFTs will see things like that. Um, where, you know, you can go to the cool. site, you get this or and so on. Um, mm -hmm. that's, you know, coming from an artist standpoint, what the NFT world is about. It's about, um, enhancing my exchange with the people that already support me and, you know, hopefully bringing more on board. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm a very serious artist and I, I am, I want to make that experience as optimal awesome. as possible. Awesome. That is, that is a I great, that is a great summary and a great way you just put it that I've, that I've never really heard before. I mean, um, <laughs> I, I think did. it's, I think it's you know, awesome. It, yeah. It's, it's so confusing because everybody that. wants to get into the whole technical th side of it all and and really when it all boils down to um 
people want to know why, why, why would I do this? And I think you summed that up uh, really nicely, you know, <laughs> in a very cool way. I, I, I like it. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I think the other part of it is people look at it and think, oh, I want to make my money. And um, I don't think you should ever approach things that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't approach my artwork that way. I make the things I want and, and I market aggressively to find the other people that are in agreement and say, yeah, I dig that. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. It's no different with your NFT market. It is even from just being a, a brand, um, you know, taking care of your people. Mm -hmm. that um, have cool. put faith in you. So Very that's cool. the end of my speech. No, I think, <laughs> I think it's awesome. I, I, that's, that actually puts it in, in more, more human terms than uh, yes. just having to read, <laughs> just having to read about, well, it's this and the whole blockchain that. And then after a while, honestly, I got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I, I mean, I'm a finance guy. I went to school for accounting. I, I, I am, I'm more old school probably, but, but, um, after a while, my eyes just kind of glaze over when I'm trying to figure yeah. out what, what, it's, what it's all about, you know? So, yeah. I, I, think I am great. completely with you. <laughs> so I'm going to put up your um, website here. Give me one second, and we'll just, we'll just walk through a few of your – so while, while we're doing that, uh, while I'm doing that, what – uh, and I asked you this before we got started, but your style, because everybody's got a uh, – uh, a style, but I don't know if necessarily they all fall into, um, you know, something that's already been conceived. Everybody, every artist, I think, has their own style, even if it is a type of art, right? And so, what what, what would you call yours? I mean, because it, it's it's. I mean, I think it's it's a it's a lot of fun to watch you do it. I think it's awesome. Well, when when pushed for a, a description, I call it abstractish. I tend to be figurative, but it has this abstract lean and feel. I um, and yeah, that. Uh, and what are you it, doing? Are you is it is it oil? Is it acrylic? What are you, what are you working with mostly? Or other mainly a, a, oh. acrylic. I used to use oil, um, and I stopped because of my kids, hmm. and I'm reconsidering it, but. But I don't know. I've gotten used to um, how quickly acrylic dries versus oil. And I think there's other oils now, but that just sounds silly. So that's what my it's dad, mainly my dad acrylic. was an oil painter. Yeah. He did some watercolor. Yeah. He did some watercolors here or there. Yeah, when he drew, he used to do charcoal, which to me uh, was really hard. It's great because you can do a lot of cool blending. I used to watch him do it. I remember as a kid, and, and your kids are going to have the same experience. You said that they're six and five. And, oh, and, they're watching. Yeah. Oh, they're, yeah. They're how, already painting. <laughs> how fun is that, right? How fun is that? Yeah. Because I remember sitting there, and, and nobody ever taught me, but, um, you know, my sister kind of was the same way. Um, my brother, not so much. My older, my oldest, my older brother. But um, we, we kind of picked up, I don't know if it's a gene or just like what we're talking about. Through osmosis, you watch. Because I remember as a kid sitting there, watching my dad paint and like I told you he'd spend an hour on a deer's ear you know <laughs> and it would be like yeah. he wanted every hair to be exact right but but that was his style right but uh yeah it's awesome that your kids are there able to see you do it because you know it's seeping in it, it it's all part yeah. of that uh as they're growing up it's going to be part of them which is fun very very cool but it, it's important you know this um what I do for a living is me being a kid still. Mm -hmm. I just never shook that. And I'm thankful for that. Not, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want them, I want them to do whatever they want, mm -hmm. but I want them to at least experience how fun it is. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we're out, I'm out yeah. here. I just pulled up on, uh, on the live stream, alsantosworld.com. And, uh, You've got you know, your, your uh, page about you, which I think is very, very cool, your merchandise. So you do do commission work. Um, what What's some of the stuff you've done that's been, that someone's asked you to do for them? I mean, that's uh, pretty bread and butter work. Um, it's usually cards. Okay. Um, 
And what size are we talking there when you do one? I mean, they range the the smallest are eight by tens, um, and then they go up to I think uh, four foot okay. tall. I, I did some like a uh, I, I I do these tobacco cards. And then, I see the whole Comedia one. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Bo Jackson. And then, uh, so it, it, it varies. You got it. Yeah. You got a lot of music, um, here as well. And other things. What's this one that looks like a Mountie? Who what is that one? It's a five by seven. I love, um, you, you look, I oh, well, that, those are, those are, I love wrestling. <laughs> ah. Oh, so there was a wrestler. That was called so, the Mountie. No kidding. I was just gonna say maybe Sergeant. I remember Sergeant Slaughter when I was a kid. He was. Yeah, he, I've done. Was, I've done Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> have you really? <laughs> I, that was um, one of my joys as a kid. When I first moved to Texas is when I first saw it on television. So I guess I was watching um, WCCW mm-hmm. up here in Dallas, and um, I just I was hooked. Um, yeah. The other day, I made a video talking about um, I had a teacher in fourth grade, mm-hmm. and um, you know, he grabs my paper and um, with disdain and puts it in a pile. He sends it home and has my mother sign it. <laughs> my mom's like waving this paper at me. She's like, "What is this?" And uh, I said, "Mom, that's that's the Road Warriors. That's Hawk and Anna." <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh-huh. and so instead of instead of you know paying attention to to his lecture i was i was always drawing and um and so she goes and meets with him and it's like well are you going to discipline him and um she said well i'll ask him not to draw the road warriors in your class uh-huh. and, um, and, <laughs> and and i think about that uh because i'm like this man was like getting in the way of my career <laughs> right you know <laughs> here i am working away at what i'll be doing for a living of course i had no way of knowing that but Not at the time, i think right? it's funny thinking back um yeah you know i was just getting ready <laughs> yeah that's right you've done some i mean so, i see you do a lot on canvas i'm just scrolling through your greatest hits here yet. i do um but you've got some wood I, I see wood as well yeah. holy cow yeah well as far as surfaces i'll paint on anything um mm-hmm. I, I I like distressed looking things. Mm-hmm. I've made a lot of cool um, especially um Negro League portraits. Mm-hmm. I did um I don't know if there's any still on there. I think they sold. Yeah, but I don't see any here, but yeah. I did a uh, gentleman Dave Malarcher. Ah recently. yeah. That was a cool one. And then um You know the story about Gentleman Dave? You know, I was learning about him, but I, I can't remember it. Heck of a heck of a third baseman, excellent uh, Negro League player. But as the story goes, um, you know, he he was involved in a couple of things that, uh, boy, you know, like I said, the stories are crazy when it comes to, uh, and certain guys always seem to be in the middle of him of, of them. There was so there was there was him. There was uh, Oliver <laughs> Oliver Oliver Marcel, uh, Frank Warfield, who was known as the his nickname was the Weasel. You had um, Oliver Ghost Marcel, gentleman Dave Malarcher. They they always seem to be in the middle of a lot of these Negro League stories, and so apparently they were all they were all at. Um, and there was another another Negro League pitcher by the name of Dave Brown. His nickname was Lefty. Very very good pitcher. And they were, as the story goes, they were out one day somewhere doing whatever they were doing at a uh, at a bar, at a restaurant, whatever. They they get into a little altercation, and someone dies. Uh, um, a someone who was there, whether they were in a fight with this guy or you know whatever happened, right? And so now these guys are all brought into question to be questioned with uh, by the police, obviously, as to what happened. And so uh, Dave Brown disappears, gone. He doesn't show up when they go to question these guys. But Dave Malarcher, um, 
Oliver Marcel and Frank Warfield are questioned. They're let go. They had nothing to do with it, but Dave Brown t- takes off. And several years later, out in the West Coast, out in the West somewhere, out in you know Wyoming, North Dakota, somewhere out that way, uh, Dave, there's a le- there's a guy, Lefty Wilson, who starts pitching in some semi-pro games out there. And rumor has it it was it was uh, Dave Brown, but no one ever really knew. He was on the FBI's most wanted list and. All kinds of things, but it it always seemed like the stories that around that time frame from those twenties and thirties always involved something to have to do with Dave Malarcher, Frank Warfield, <laughs> Oliver Marcel. They were always in the middle of a lot of uh, interesting stories oh, for sure. There. Yeah, that's the thing. It's so mythical, and right. Um, I, I love that. Like, uh, I think just some of the descriptions sometimes. Rube Foster. Um, I'm reading, and it's like, yeah, he's rumored to always carry a gun, even when he was on the mound. <laughs> like, can't blame some of them like that. Right? I'm um, like, wow. <laughs> I this it, uh, this one of Andre the Giant is uh, is kind of epic. I got to say that that uh, <laughs> what that Andre the Giant one is is just classic. Now that was a picture, right? Which this, one is it? It's the one where he's holding like four girls uh, on his shoulders, so, and yeah. So I, I do these daily videos, and um, I always I say, you know, <laughs> if you got suggestions, bring them on. Um, yeah. And I don't always get to all of them. I feel like eventually I do, but um, Andre the Giant was one, and then the guy sent me that picture, and uh. I just, I was like, yeah, that's awesome. And so I did my take on it. And, um, you got to do, and a that's Rube, very you important. Do, you got to do a root foster. foster. You should do a root foster. Yeah, I, I, I've done a, I've done a few of them. Like most of these guys, I've, I've painted them um, a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really, now, I notice when you do the cards. Um, the way you do the letters, what's the reason for that? You kind of up, you know, you you uh, stagger the letters when you uh, put it on there. Even on, even on, like I'm looking at Eddie Murray. I just noticed that. I mean, the O is off <laughs> of his uniform. What's the, what? What's the reason that you do that? I think it's cool. I, think I, it, I do, but I, I just is curious. Well, I, I do it because I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> is that why? Yeah, but that's your that's your style. Now I think it's kind of cool. I think well, it's very, very cool. my work. My work is really, um, if I could do a funny piece all the time, uh, if, if I could just make everyone laugh all the time, um, cool. that would make me happy. What's See, up the reality the, is you, you can't do that. But yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. What's but, up um, with the, but, uh, the Raleigh fingers? What is that uh, to the left? See, that's, um, I also like to scribble. And I like people that try to make out what that says, but it doesn't say anything. It's okay. Just, um, that, yeah, that was that was kind of a. It's weird. That was like a little period of my. <laughs> I my thought at, at first it. when I thought about it, the way he is because he's got that handlebar mustache. I thought it was like uh, um, his mustache had gotten loose <laughs> to the left there. You know. <laughs> well, it, yeah, I mean, I, I like that mystery of it. And yeah, then, right. Um, I think I think that kind of started because I was painting Muppets. Oh yeah, I see and that. You got a, you of, got a you got a Grover here in in this one, right? I think yeah. it's Grover. Okay, it's so, Grover, yeah. Mayhem, it says. I don't know. Oh, okay, that's uh, Doctor Teeth. Yeah. Um, I put him on a baseball card. Yeah. But. But yeah, I, I put the graffiti beside Grover, I think, and um, mm-hmm. I just thought it was funny. Mm-hmm. The the uh, the pairing. <laughs> so you've got um, lsantosworld dot com where you got your work. You've also got you said an Instagram, and and I know you're on Twitter as well. With um, yeah, uh, uh, what what where can we find it? El Santos World on on Twitter. Well, Instagram, TikTok, you're also doing as well. I love TikTok. I think it's um, well, for one thing, it's got me disciplined on making videos. I this last week, I kind of took off uh, time from 
I'll do kind of a daily recap where I just talk about what I've been making. Okay. And, um, and I realized I've been doing that for a good run. So I took a little time off from that, but I missed it. So I did my, I posted the one for today. I feel better. <laughs> but it was nice sure. to get a rest because, you know, it's all like a little mini production. So sure. I think it's, like I think they're on great. Top, on top of like creating the work and posting it, um, all of that process. You know, well, it all takes really... time. And you got kids. I, I know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm trying to work to the point where um, I am able to take a little time off. Mm -hmm. You know, right now it's, it's seven days a week. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah but, but so what what are you working what, what are you working on now what do you what do you got going on well i've been doing um 1978 um style baseball cards with musicians on them that's okay. been that's um and it's it's records that i grew up hearing or um i've been watching a lot of music documentaries too <laughs> and um but other than that, I'm usually pretty random as far as the sports art. And then the there's the Mayan body of my work where um, I just make these strange little figures. And that's what I'm making into NFTs. NFTs, right I saw that. That seems to be popular. I've noticed a bunch of uh, different ones are running around out there that are little little figures, little heads, little whatever they are. And people like them, I mm -hmm. guess. I mean, <laughs> why not? Right? Well, I mean... Yeah. See, and I, I think that's what <laughs> that's what's confusing about those NFTs once again. Like, mm -hmm. you know, is it is it is it about penguins and tortoises or yeah. what are <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what are no, we doing? I, get it. I, I get just it. I, I well but I I saw that and I was like, well, I like these Mayan things are they're way different than that, but mm -hmm. they kind of, you know, can organize themselves that way. That's that's what's interesting about doing different things. Now, um, I've done a bunch of interviews in the last year with authors, many of them children's books authors. And I don't know if you're familiar with some of them, but uh, <clears throat> Audrey Audrey Vernick I had on a few weeks ago. She did the latest her latest book is on Larry Doby. Um, there's been Jonah Winter has been writing books going back to the 1980s into the 1990s on not just baseball, but other social issues. He's written books about uh, Frida Kahlo and, and uh, Supreme Court justices and Barack Obama and you, you name it. I mean, he's, he's written about it probably, but for nine, nine year old on down kind of kids, kids books. Right. And, and so many of those are illustrated by um, other artists and i've had people ask me how how would they go about getting into that have you ever thought about doing illustrations or anything like that for for those types of things because they're they are always looking for uh, new and interesting and different takes on things and it's not necessarily um you know books they're not always looking for photorealistic you know as a matter of fact it's not what they want they want kind of an artist's take as well as the author's take a lot of times on these books and 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 have you ever thought about that i mean it, i think it'd be kind of fun i mean some I, of your stuff kind of fits in there been in the, yeah that's always been in the back of my mind especially i did um during the pandemic i was working with a nonprofit, mm -hmm. and i started this thing called the little monster project and we would you know, gather donations and make these kits that were paint at home kits. And part of it was I would pre-draw these monsters. And um, cool. And and that got me really thinking because I loved. Uh, that's where the, the little Mayan monsters came from. They're you, kind of um, a derivative of that. You having little kids like that. And I can tell just by talking to you, your imagination, and and because of the fact that you, like you, you, know, you, we started out talking about that, the fact that you really enjoy uh, the fact that that people sometimes keep a handle on things that they were, what they were like when they were growing up, that they don't lose that, right? Yeah. So I think yeah. a lot of the way the way you do things and and think, you'd probably be pretty good at writing kids' books and and illustrating them. A lot a lot of these authors. 
that's how they get started on it. You know, they have kids of their own or they're a teacher. And then some of them do their own artwork. I mean, Jonah did his own. He did a whole card set for, he did a Negro League, um, I think it was 12 or 14 players in his book. Uh, you got to check yeah. it out. Uh, Jonah, Jonah Winter. Uh, but he illustrated his own cards. And um, mm -hmm. then uh, he did a, a Latin Caribbean baseball set of uh, he, he tried to find a player from every every Latin country and add them to this team. And and, and he really enjoyed doing it. And just that was what he did. Uh, he wrote about the player um, and drew the card, put it into a book and. That's how we got into selling it. So I, I thought it was really, really cool. And yeah, I, I have a friend. I don't know if you talked to him, uh, Bill Cormalis Jr. No, no. At Modern Baseball Art. Um, okay. He did a uh, he did a coloring book. Cool. Of, uh, I yeah. think it was Negro League baseball players. Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Anyway, there's, there's, to do there. there is a lot, right? And and you only got so much time in the day to. Um, <laughs> to do it right we only but, have one lifetime yeah yeah um, that's why i look that's the way i look at it pack it get get what you can <laughs> in there make sure you're like you said nice to people <laughs> that's one of the things i think about social media that <laughs> yeah. that i think is important um yeah don't get me wrong there's many times i, I need to bite my tongue when it comes to <laughs> when i when i read something and it just grates on me but but you know what uh you're better off uh being nice to people, supporting people, uh, you know, well, helping when having, you can. That, having, that's... I think having compassion on that type of behavior, because um, I see it too, and it's just like, well, they must be going through something. <laughs> Maybe. To, um, to go that, that far way. over the cliff? Yeah, yeah. It makes you wonder. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. You know, what are you, what are you thinking? <laughs> right exactly <laughs> anyway I, I would yeah i think i think i love i love watching your your little your videos that you do uh that you post uh i love hearing your insights on a lot of that stuff um i think it I th yeah i think uh um other people if they check out your work would enjoy it and, you know check out elsantosworld.com and and uh support each other right that's what it's all that's what it's all about yeah, and, I, I so appreciate it yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, like I said, speaking of time in the day, I, I am really thank you for taking the time and juggling it because I screwed up the days um, <laughs> and <laughs> no, make, no. making it work here because, like I said, like I, said I just didn't want to miss our conversation. So <laughs> no, this was fun, and, and like I said, I you if um, if you want to, I post these. This will sit out on Twitch for I think it's sixty days, but I also I, I started uploading things to YouTube as well because um they won't go away i mean twitch you figure there's how many millions of people twitch twitch is interesting right because uh, uh it used to be just gaming uh in the beginning you know people playing call of duty you know or madden or whatever right but now that amazon bought them they have everything on there now you got live music and concerts and and um talk shows and people streaming this and that some some nonsense a lot of nonsense there's always nonsense on the internet somewhere right <laughs> but yeah. twitch has got a um a platform that allows you to um you know get yourself in front of people that maybe didn't know who you were uh, before. And, and, and like, like I said, that's really why I'm doing this is to try to get people um, a younger audience. Cause that's still gamers and people who are playing games not always, but you know, get them interested in some of these things because um, it, it there it's, it's fun. It's, it's interesting. I like hearing people's stories and I think, uh, that's another place. And then I post them on a couple other forums and other places. So, so if you want a copy or you want the link, I'll send you the link to, um, to this as well and, and, uh, do with yeah, it what you I'd want. Love you know? that. Yeah. So I'll share and tag. Yeah, all right. for sure. So keep, keep in touch. Um, like I said, I, we follow each other on Twitter, so I'm sure we'll, we'll be <laughs> keeping in touch, but, um, I, I'm out there. Yeah. So whenever, <laughs> when you got something that you want to talk about or down the road, you got some other projects that you're getting into, just let me know and we'll, we'll get back on here. I appreciate it. Man. Thank All you. right, man. I'm going to sign us off. Don't go away. I'm going to just get us off the line, okay. but thank you, sir. Appreciate it.